You fool! Warren is dead. Welcome to Horror Babble. Well, folks, today we're thrilled to present a piece of flash fiction penned by my brother, Gary Gordon. Some of you may know him as the voice of Norman Cain in the Van Melsen stories. His first offering goes by the name of Seething Simon. It's a short one, so we won't spoil it by revealing too much here in the introduction. We hope you enjoy it. Seething Simon by Gary Gordon Michael awoke with a start. Sweat soaked his grimy, grey, deflated pillow. He raised his heavy, aching head and slowly attempted to focus his eyes on the strange, dark, fuzzy shapes of his normally familiar, small, untidy bedroom. Nothing stirred, not even the tiniest hint of a sound. All he could hear was the fast, rhythmic pounding of his heart. He lay there for what seemed like an eternity, but in reality was actually only a few seconds, trying his best to make sense of the disturbing fractal jigsaw pieces of horror that were the ensemble of his nightmare. After a few more seconds, Michael attempted to lift his weary torso from the torn and ragged sheet-free mattress, its springs yawning and creaking, emitting a sorrowful tune in the process. Then, reaching full stretch to his right, he fumbled at the lamp, Michael's short, stubby fingers fiddling unsuccessfully for the switch. As he did, he felt the light touch of velvety fabric dangling fronds upon his cold knuckles. Wait, Michael said. He whispered softly but with urgency to himself. In an instant, the memories of his nightmare began to return to his waking consciousness, filling his tired, pulsating brain with horrendous, terrifying imagery. Michael's late father, his extremely short-tempered, impatient, bitter late father, had acquired in his youth a doll. It was given to him by an old acquaintance who was once part of a strange Victorian circus, specializing in oddities and the unusual freak shows and the like. After his father's passing some years ago, Michael had named the doll Seething Simon, which was presumably a reference to his father's negative personality trait. Michael now squirmed uncomfortably in the horror of his night terror, for it was Simon who had entered his nightmare as the main, twisted, demented, and indeed seething protagonist. Michael retracted his hand from the lamp immediately, closed his eyes, and lay back down in his bed, pulling his cold white sheet right up to his stubbly chin. He didn't know what to do. He was stuck in that strange in-between world of should I or shouldn't I. He recalled to himself that before retiring to bed, Seething Simon had been sitting in his usual place atop a set of drawers by the window in the opposite left corner of the room, his silhouette always visible at night, from the streetlight filtering through the old cracked window pane. Michael wanted to open his eyes and look over into the corner so badly, but his weary, wrinkly eyelids felt as though they had been glued shut. Something in his mind was also telling him not to look. But despite all his agonizing, and with no decision made, Michael suddenly opened his eyes. The overwhelming sensation of dread and Terror swept like a huge dark wave throughout Michael's entire body as he realized with horror that the silhouette of Simon was gone. Michael's eyes flickered intensely from side to side, up and down and all around, scanning the room intently. No, 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 he muttered, repeating the words nervously over and over in his head. He paused for a second as he thought he caught a glimpse of a moving shadow out of the corner of his eye. Maybe there was a draught. The gust from the cracked window pane must have blown him onto the floor. Michael knew that was impossible the minute he thought it. I know, he continued to think. 
The vibrations from a vehicle driving by outside shook him off. He knew deep down that too was improbable, if not also impossible. Abruptly, Michael's thoughts were instantly focused on a noise. A somewhat disturbingly creepy noise. It sounded like a soft, high-pitched giggling emanating from the direction of his unlit bedside lamp. Michael sat immediately upright in a complete and utter manifestation of fright and unspeakable terror. He sat there, shaking in fear, blindly attempting to make sense of the sound. Suddenly, the bedside lamp illuminated the room. Turning his head slowly to his right, Michael's rational mind instantly made the connection as to what thing had brushed his knuckles a few minutes earlier. Not the velvety fronds of the old antique lampshade, but the soft, shimmering locks of seething Simon's hair. Simon sat casually on the edge of the bedside table, one hand on the lamp switch, a small shaving blade in the other. Michael couldn't breathe or make a sound. His thin body, frozen in terror, could not move. The only sound he could hear was that of the gurgling and trickling of his own blood as Simon moved the blade somewhat meticulously across Michael's pale, skinny throat. Slowly, slowly, oh so slowly. If you enjoyed listening today, be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red subscribe button below. After doing so, click the bell icon next to the subscribe button to receive new content notifications. If you'd like to support our work and receive exclusive perks, consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below. To support us in other ways, see the video description for links to our Bandcamp and Patreon pages, our merch store over at Teespring, and further information relating to our releases on Audible, iTunes, and Spotify. And until next time.